For the following exercises, rewrite the quadratic functions in standard form and give the vertex. Okay, so we've already talked about the big, you know, uh, generalizations of quadratic functions in the first question of this playlist. If you guys are on the quadratic functions playlist, awesome. If you want more context, go back to that first lesson in the playlist, the first video of the playlist. If not, the link is in the description if you guys wanna be on the playlist. Um, but other than that, let's get started. We know that these are quadratics because the highest x value is a squared, right? And quadratics, they're very simple. On a graph, they either will smile at you or they will frown at you. That's all, they're very simple. There are two forms of a quadratic function. The general form and the standard form. The general form is the one that you see here. You will see it as ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? So you'll have both the x squared term and the x uh, term in the general form. However, in the standard form, you will not see the x squared. It will be like this. It will be a x minus h squared plus k. And that's a lowercase k. Th these will both equal your function f of x. And basically the only thing that is similar between them is that they both have this a value. However, b and c are not the same as h and k. So somehow we have to convert b's and c's into h and k. The first thing that we have to do, so let's look at the first function, f of x equals x squared minus x. We have to find out what the a, b, and c values are. If we run through this, the a value is always the one next to the x squared, the b value is always the one next to the x, and the c value is all by its lonesome. So here I have an x squared. The number in front will always tell you the a value, but there is no number here, right? So it would technically be a one. So my a value is one, right? One times x squared is just x squared. The b value is always the one in front of the x. However, there is a minus or a negative, and it's the same thing. I don't see a number here, so I know that that's a one. But now in this case, it's a negative one. Make sure that you look at those signs. And now the C value is the one all by its lonesome, but I don't see anything moving on here, right? Technically, you would see like a plus four or a negative two, but I don't have anything. So what would this be? It would be literally plus zero. I don't have any other C value. So my C value is zero in this case. Now, how do we go from A, B's, and C's to, you know, A, H's, and K's? The key here is that if we want to find a H value, the H value, which is the axis of symmetry, which we'll get to in later, later questions, is always negative B over 2A. So that's how we convert my B's and A's from my general form into an h value, the axis of symmetry, in my standard form. So let's, let's do it. So let's do it over here. h equals negative b all over 2a. So this would be equal to negative. I have to put that because it's in the formula. And then my b value was a negative 1 all over 2 times 1. My a value was a 1. So in this case, it's a positive 1 half right? Negative times a negative is a positive, and that's my h value. Okay, we're getting there. Now we just need to find the k value, right? Because if we look at the standard form, I have my a value, I just found my h value, and now I need to find my k value. So the, the rule of thumb is that for a k value, all you have to do is find f of h. 
some of you guys might be like, what? This just means that you're going to plug in H, the H value. So, right, you're going to plug in that H number that you found out in for the X values. My H value here was a one half. So, if I'm doing F now of H, right, to find out what K is, my H value was a one half. So for all of the X values, you're just literally putting in a one half. So here the function was equal to X squared. So now it's one half squared, right? Minus an X value. So one half and then plus zero. You don't have to add that part, but that's basically what we're doing here. So I'm gonna say k is going to equal uh, one half squared, and remember that's one half times one half, so that would be one fourth, so this would be one fourth minus one half. We are subtracting fractions, so we need a common denominator, I'll get each one to be a four. So if you just multiply by two on the bottom, you multiply by two on the top, this really turns into two over four. So one half is the same thing as two, two over four. And now I can do the substitution. One minus two is a negative one over four. And that is your K value. Okay. So now I have all the pieces to the puzzle. I have my A value, check. I have my H value, and I have my K value. So the standard form for this one, and I'll write it up on the top, it's still going to be F of X equals my A value was 1. So I could put the 1, but you don't have to. Right, 1 times anything is itself. And then parenthesis, X minus H. H was a 1 half close those parentheses, square it, and then you just got to add your K value. But your K was a negative one-fourth, so I have to say minus one-fourth. And that is your standard formula. Now we just have to find the vertex. But the vertex is very simple. The vertex is just H comma K. You can remember that because H comes first in the alphabet, then K. So my vertex, and I'll just put it down here, is one half comma negative one fourth. Now what a vertex is, is it's either going to be, if my um, graph is smiling, the vertex is going to be the lowest of the low on my graph. But if my, if my quadratic is frowning, it's the highest of the high. It's the turning point. That's what a vertex is. My A value is a positive, right? It's a one. So we're smiling. If you're positive, you're smiling, right? So in this case, my vertex would be the lowest of the low on my smile. And that point would be one half comma negative one fourth, just to kind of put it into perspective on the graph. Okie dokie, let's do the next one. They gave us a uh, general form, f of x equals x squared plus five x minus two. Let's find our a, b, and c. You could always find the a, b, and c from the general form. The a is always in front of the x squared. There's no number here, so that's a one. I have a plus five in front of my X value. So that's my B. So that would be a five. And then I have a negative two and there's no X or X squared. So that's my C value. So my C would be a negative two. I have to put my sign in there. Now I'm going to use this information to get H and K. Always find out H first and then you can find out K. So H would be negative B all over 2A. So negative B, we have a five for my B, so this would be negative five, the negative is in the formula, divided by two times one. 
So in this case, this would be h equals, well, negative 5 over 2. And that would be equal to my h value. Okay, one piece of the puzzle done. Now I have to find k. And remember, k is just f of h. I'm plugging in all of my h values in for the x values. So I'm just going to say that k equals, if I'm just plugging this in, and you know what? I'm going to do it like this, just to show you guys. So this was the original function, right? All I have to do is get rid of those x's, all of the x's, and put in the h value. So in this case, it would be negative 5 over 2 squared time, uh, plus 5 times negative 5 over 2. And then let me just bring this out. There you go. Okay, so negative 5 over 2 squared is the same thing as negative 5 over 2 times negative 5 over 2. So this would be 25 over 4. Right? We multiply across both the numerator and the denominator. So k would be equal to 25 over 4 plus 5 times a negative 5 over 2 is, let's say this is a negative 25 over 2. So minus 25 over 2 and then minus 2. Now you can plug this into the calculator. I'm just going to do the math with fractions just so that you guys get better with your fractions. I know that's a lot of trouble for you guys, but have no fear. Fractions are fun. We need to get them into a common denominator, right? So this 2 is really 2 over 1. The biggest number is a 4, and I can easily make these two denominators into a 4. I'm going to multiply this by 2 and I'm going to multiply this one by 4. But whatever you do on the bottom, you have to do on the top. So I'm going to multiply the top by 2, and I'm going to multiply the top one by 4. So this would be the same thing as 25 times 2 is 50, 2 times 2 is 4. This would be the same as 50 over 4. And then I do the same thing here. There was a negative here. So 2 times 4 is 8, divided by 1 times 4 is 4, so this would be the same as 8 over 4. And now I'm just going to do the math across the numerator, but I keep the denominators the same. So this would be over 4, but now I just do the math on the top. 25 minus 50, let's see, 25 minus 50 is a negative 25 minus 8, right? Because there's a minus sign here. So 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Yes, I still do math on my hands, and that's totally okay. So <laughs> this equals negative 33 over 4. You can once again get the decimal, but your, your teachers probably want you to work with fractions. So just get in the hang of it. But there you go. This is equal to the k value. So right off the bat, I have a vertex. I'll put my vertex over here. My vertex is h comma k, so it would be negative 5 over 2 comma negative 33 over 4. And just to put it into perspective, this is either the highest of the high or the lowest of the low. My a was a positive number, so I'm smiling. And this would be these coordinates. Now let's just put this in standard form. Standard form would be f of x equals this notation, right? a times x minus h squared plus k. My a was 1. So for this case, I won't put it, but you can always put the 1. And then in parentheses, we have x minus h. A minus times a negative is a positive. So this would be plus 5 over 2 squared, and then I have a plus k, but my k was a negative, so it's a negative 33 over 4. And that is your standard form. Woohoo! Okay. And just know that, you know, these two forms 
are equivalent to each other. They're just written in two different ways. So you're still talking about the same graph, whether you're talking about its general form or the standard form. They just tell you different things. All right, guys. So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments what's up and how you're doing and, you know, how you're doing in your math class and if this video helped. Um, if it did, give it a like. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, you, you know, you always can. But if not, that's okay, too. We still love you. Still want to help you guys out. Um, I thank you so much for watching the video. And yeah, I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.